If you have enough money and nerve to decide to buy one of the most overpriced mowers on the market, are you ready for the commitment it takes to make sure that investment is going to last? That way that hard-earned money you just spent will be well worth it. Or are you just going to take it easy and just assume that all the money you spent was so you don't have to lift a finger to take care of it? If you think that way, well I'm here to tell you, you might have just made a terrible choice as to which mower you bought. In today's video, we look at this Honda lawnmower and the problem is that the pull rope is incredibly tough to pull and when the engine starts, it's making a terrible noise. Now, I've already fixed this mower and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about some of the misconceptions and drawbacks about Honda lawnmowers that some people just seem to overlook. Now if you've seen my past videos, you'll know that I really like Honda mowers and I think they're worth the high price they ask for them, but for some people these are some of the most problematic mowers out there, so we're going to address some of these issues and maybe even agree on some of the facts about them. So if you had $500 to spend on a lawnmower, would a Honda be near the top of your list? Unfortunately for some, it wouldn't even show up on the list at all. The reason is, as a car company, I think they make a great car, but as a company that makes a mower, they might just be making it a bit too complicated to be called reliable. Think about it, a mower is nothing more than an engine bolted to a mowing deck with four wheels and a handlebar and a blade attached to the engine. Why make it more complicated than that? Now this is when the answer gets a bit tricky. Now don't get me wrong, you can still order a simple mower from them with the basic features I just mentioned for about $470 before tax, but for some reason they don't have that particular mower readily available, instead you have the base model self-propel for about $150 more. Sounds like a marketing scheme to make sure they sell what makes them the most money and not what the customer wants. But what does a typical customer want to buy? Unfortunately, this is the heart of the matter. Do you want every feature available or do you want something in between? And there's a huge issue that most consumers seem to overlook. I'm going to change topics for a minute, so bear with me. If you wanted to buy a house with a pool, guess what you have to deal with? Pool issues. If you wanted a house with a basement, guess what you also get? Basement issues. So basically, every extra add-on you choose, you get extra issues you need to deal with. Now, if you already know how to deal with a pool, that's great, and if you grew up with the basement and know what to expect, even better. But what happens if you never had either one of them and decide to get a home with them? Well, get ready for a few surprises then. So this mower belongs to a good friend of mine, and they told me the story of how they got it, and even though I'm not going to go into the details, this mower was a must-buy for the new situation they found themselves in. Now life sometimes gets in the way of the smaller items we need to take care of and that's because keeping a roof over your head and food on the table is a bit more important than changing your oil and also maintaining a few extra features on your mower. So I completely understand why this mower almost didn't make it past the 10 year mark, but I will say it was a rough 10 years. So believe it or not, this mower has never had an oil change, has never even had its oil checked, and even though it's lasted this long, it didn't go undamaged. So yes, these Hondas are overpriced, but show me a newer engine that's still using its break-in oil for the last 10 years and still have good compression. I would hate to try this kind of abuse out on any engine, but if I wanted to do it and have one pass the test, well I guess I'd choose this one then. Now the part of the engine that did see some wear is the upper bushing, and that's from the lack of oil, but you can't blame it. Now one of the coolest features on this mower is the blade clutch. This will allow you to keep the engine running while not having to worry about the blade. This feature is a complete luxury and is not needed. And the reason is, when these fail, most often the bearings will seize up. And if you're not able to replace them yourself, get ready for a hefty repair bill. Remember, when not using the blade, the bearings will take the load and these do not last forever. So if I happen to have one of these, I would not have the engine running for long without the blade spinning with it. Now the bearings are not expensive and to be honest if you have the right tools or a big enough hammer it's not tough to replace them but for most replacing it themselves is out of the question. Instead I would recommend that you do not get the blade clutch system and the reason is very simple. You won't have to deal with clutch issues and owning one of these Honda mowers will be a better experience. Besides you won't have to pay for a feature that's just going to fail in the future. Now if you really want one of these just be aware of the issues you might run into. So if you choose to not get the blade clutch system, then you should be fine to not have to maintain the mower, right? Of course not. The most common complaint that often comes up when talking with those who do not prefer Honda mowers is the self-propel system and the drive wheels that lock up. So the first time I saw this issue for myself, I wasn't sure what to make of it, but once I got it up on the table and taken apart, I started to realize that I had two issues, one of which came from the factory and the second issue was caused by the user. 
What had happened on the first mower I saw with this issue was that the key that was part of the ratcheting system for the drive was installed upside down from the factory. Now the drive still worked but didn't work like it should. The other part was that the axles had become rusted to the bushings, which only happens when you use the mower on wet grass either for mowing in the morning or after the sprinklers had been used. Now I'm not blaming the consumer for this, but it's nice to know what exactly happened to it, that way you can try and fix it. After replacing the stuck bearings, it's now much easier to pull on the rope. If you're curious, it was the upper larger bearing that was trying to fight against the engine and of course the person who was trying to pull on the rope. The other issue most are not ready to deal with are the misaligned wheels and greasing the ratcheting part of the drive gears. The reason for both of these are due to excessive time. The wheels on this particular model have never been changed. That means this took the abuse for the last 10 years and they didn't break. But what took the abuse was the rest of the components for the wheels, mainly the axles and the brackets. Now the brackets will bend over time and the other components will wear, causing the wheels to be out of alignment. Now it's not a big deal since this isn't a car, but it just means you'll have to keep adjusting the mower's direction to compensate for it. Some other brands of mowers never even make it this far to have something like this happen to them, unless you're talking about the ones with the front ends made completely out of plastic and not the good ones either. So for me, this isn't even a real issue, just more of a gripe than anything else. Oh, and if you happen to get a mower like this one, you'll get ball bearing wheels, which is something most won't give you. Now the drive wheels have a ratcheting system and that's the light clicking noise you hear when you push the mower forward. When pulling the mower backwards, that will actually spin the axles and work the transmission. Like I said before, this is one reason why you can push the mower forwards, but they sometimes lock up when going backwards. This also works as a differential between both wheels. Now I don't recall if there's a part in the owner's manual about servicing the ratcheting system, but if there isn't, there should be. Now keeping these lubricated will make pushing the mower even with the engine off a lot easier. Now you don't need to do this very often, and if I had to make my own schedule, I'd probably say every few years, but that's up to you. Lubricating the gears every one to two years is just a bit excessive in my book, but it's your mower, so do what you want with it. And if you choose to never do it, then that's your choice. This one has never been done before, and it's lasted all this time. As for what type of lube you want to use, well that's up to you. For me, I'm using lithium grease from a can because it's more convenient to use. It doesn't have to be anything special. So why don't you have to do this for other brands of mowers with self-propel then? That's quite simple. Their drive system is different from this one. Some have differentials inside the transmission, so this kind of service is not needed. Does that mean that the other designs are better then? Not really, but to be honest, most never work for 10 years without an issue either, so take your pick as to which one you want. I will say one thing, living a long life has its cons. Even if the engine runs just like brand new because of constant maintenance and care, the rest of the mower may not fare that well just because there's not much that can be done to wearing metal or metal fatigue. But I have a great solution for this issue, which is to use the mower until it's falling apart, then transplant the engine to a different mowing deck that may have experienced a catastrophic failure. Now this one is still holding up very well, but eventually something's going to give up on it and then we'll need to make a few tough choices. Now my friend was aware that the engine was running a lot slower than it should have been, so to compensate for it, they decided to modify the governor's spring to make the engine work harder against whatever mysterious force that was holding it back. And since we already fixed that issue, which was the stuck bearing, we need to replace the modified spring with a new one. That way it runs just like it's supposed to. If the engine speed is a bit off, we'll adjust the spring so the engine runs where it needs to be. Just be aware that this engine is a bit loud because of the wear on the top bearing, which you'll hear in a bit. The last issue I have to fix, which to be honest was never really an issue until recently. For some reason, I'm now seeing a rash of recoil spring issues. In this part of the video, I'm going to take the spring out and to be quite frank, we didn't need to. Instead of taking out the spring and cleaning it by hand, using some brake cleaner in the spring area and working the spring for a minute or two and then spraying it clean works out even better. And you don't have to worry about winding a spring back up. This is what I would call working smarter and not harder, although the harder way also works extremely well. There simply isn't a good reason to take out the spring unless it's broken and you need to replace it. Now after cleaning it, you can spray a light lube on it, but you don't have to if you don't want to. The reason is because I've had some recoils develop the same issue again, but this time it's because of the lube I had used on it. So just be careful which one you choose to use, but from personal experience, just cleaning the spring works just fine. Since now I know what the issue is, cleaning it after the fact is a lot easier unless I have to take the entire machine apart to get to the recoil. Now these recoils are replaced so often that the aftermarket has started making a lot more of them. That means the prices for the recoils are extremely affordable, even though it's for a Honda. So I wouldn't blame you if you decided to order a new one and install it instead of doing anything with the old one. 
just don't throw away the old one because it still has a few good parts on it. Now after winding the spring about four to five times, I'll then try using it. And as you can see, it's now working just like it's supposed to. So we didn't even need to replace anything, just a good cleaning and adding some lube. The last thing I want to do before I try to start this engine is to show you just how much this engine has worn in the last 10 years. For this part, I'm going to use a compression tester to show you just how much wear is on the piston rings. Remember, this engine has never had an oil change and the oil level was extremely low most of that time. So I would expect a very low reading, probably below 90 PSI. I'm also going to use my drill to bypass the compression release. Like I said, this engine is a bit noisy because of the upper bushing wear, but as you can see, the reading is about 170 PSI, which is just amazing considering the kind of abuse it's been through. The last thing we need to do is to replace the freshly cleaned recoil and then add some 100% gasoline to the tank and then try starting it. If you can't get 100% gasoline in your area, try using an additive to help keep the ethanol in it from ruining your fuel system. And if you don't want to use an additive, then I guess you're on your own then. As you just saw, I was smoking quite a bit, but that's mainly my fault. When picking up the mower to take the mower off the work table, I end up having the front of the mower pointed down. That'll put some of the oil up against the back of the piston, and some of it will leak past the rings and cause it to smoke on the first startup. But as you just heard, the engine is making a knocking sound, which I hate to say cannot easily be fixed or cheaply, so it's not going to. Besides, it still starts and runs, and the self-propel works just fine. All you need is hearing protection. So when buying something expensive, it doesn't mean you can just keep using it and forget about taking care of it. Fortunately for this one, aside from some bearing wear, it's held up quite well. Too bad I can't say the same for the bearings on the clutch. Now I'm not sure just how long they lasted before they started having their issues, but 10 years is a long time, and I think they got their money's worth out of it. As for me, just a plain Jane Honda with a single speed self-propel works just fine, and I don't have to spend any extra money on stuff I don't want. So my question is, if you were going to get a very expensive mower, and it doesn't matter if it's a Honda or not, would you get all the extras like a variable speed self-propel and a blade clutch? I think you already know what my answer is going to be. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.